Um, hey, uh, I, I, you know, Nathan, um, I think it's cool you, you brought your mom on board. Uh, your mom's here, you know, so uh, so I already said hello to her and, and hopefully she got her, her, uh, her re uh, not a recording device, but the, the sound on since it looked like she was having a connection problem. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey man, um, you know, I, I, I wore this shirt kind of, kind of for you too. Um, uh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, people here, you know, we've, we've got a pretty good turnout and people here, they, they love the fact that you're a Washington native and, uh, you know, you're, you're from, you're from, you're from the area and, uh, and it's kind of cool that, you know, every year, at least that I've known you've, uh, you've come back to Washington for, for these from across America event and just kind of you know, to kind of pay your respects to, you know, your old teammate. I mean, he was, I was the fifth year when he, when, uh, when Matt kind of got on board, but uh, it's, it's nice that you still come back for that. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, I think, you know, family, family is not always the ones that you were born with, but the people that were with you uh, during, during your struggles. So that's kind of cool. Um, hey, you know, just as we kind of talked, you know, through, through, through text, um, I just kind of want to hear, and I think we all just kind of want to hear about your beginnings and, and how you got into the sport and, you know, and later on what you loved about it and what kept you coming back and, uh, and stuff like that. So, you know, um, yeah. How about, how about we start with uh, you telling us where you're from? Uh, a lot of us already know, but, you know, I think, uh -huh. I think it'd be pretty cool for, for, for our younger ones to, to hear what part of the woods you come from. Yeah, of course. Um, so I grew up in Bremerton. Uh, not too far away. We, uh, of course, had a ton of meets in, uh, in, federal, in federal way. Um, we were crossing the bridge uh, to, to get there for our meets. But I grew up, uh, started swim lessons a little bit before I was two years old. Um, that was more of a water safety thing, of course. Again, as, as you all know, you know my, my normal spiel is that Kitsap County has, uh, I think it has the most coastline of any county uh, in the United States. Um, you all know that there's a lot of parks and things that are uh, that that have docks um, that are that have lakes, whatever it may be. It was it was water safety, of course. Um, when I was five years old, I was at the pool with my mom. We were waiting for my brother and sister to get out of their practice, and I actually saw my best friend from first grade, or yeah, it was first grade, and he was in the pool at the you know in the in the shallow end doing doing the age group thing. And, uh, and that was, that was when I started, I was like, mom, let's go. Like, I, I'm ready to join now because I think I was a little bit intimidated, a little bit afraid to join a team on my own. You know, what, what kid isn't? Um, and, and I was no different. So with the, with the, my friend there, it, it definitely offered a level of comfort. Um, and, and one of the things I, I'm still thankful for to this day is that as I was really, really young, um, the emphasis from the coaching staff was figuring out how to enjoy the water. Uh, it was figuring out how to enjoy, you know, my, my teammates and my, the, the, the company I was with um, and, and still paying attention to the coach while the coach is talking and, and still doing the things that, that the coach wants me to do. But understanding that this is still a time that you can enjoy. It's not just, you know, go to practice, not say a word, do everything the coach says and then go home. Um, it's something that that you can still listen to your coach. You can still get better, and you can you can still have a good time uh, while you do it. So I I got more serious um, about seventh or eighth grade. That's when um, you know one of my teams, uh, the coach had left, and we started going to a, a, a team a little bit further away, and that was when I started seeing what it meant to care about your swimming. Um, started seeing what it meant to train hard in order to swim fast. Um, before it was a little bit more about, again, going, going to practice, going through the motions um, and, and going home and, and eating and doing my homework and going to sleep. Um, was, was that the Tacoma Swim Club commute with Jay? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, what time, uh, what, how old were you when you were doing that? I, th I think it was eighth grade. I think seventh grade, I, I did a different team for about a year and then that didn't quite work out. And then, and then I think eighth grade, we started going to Tacoma. Um, so that was, again, that, and we were, we were good. We were really good. I mean, we were 130 people. And I think for the 2004 Olympic trials that uh, we had like 
eight qualifiers or something crazy like that, which is, which is a great turnout for, um, for a team that small. Um, so that was, that was cool. I, I was swimming with, uh, of course, Dana Kirk, um, who was an, an Olympian, um, with a bunch of other people who kept going on to, um, division one schools. Um, and, and that's when I, it was, it was seeing that, um, that, that kind of opened my eyes. And then as I got up to the senior group with Jay, uh, one of the things that he really, really pounded in our brains was that this is a sport that you get out what you put in. Um, and, and that is so, so that's, I think that's one of the best things about swimming, right? Is, is that you get to own your performance at the end of the day. Of course, there are so many people, countless people that are going to help you. Uh, along the way, whether it be your coaches, your parents, your family, your friends. Um, but you are doing the work, um, right? Like your coach can't get in and make sure that you're doing the right number of kicks off of every wall. Um, your coach can't, um, you know, can't, it, Mike, you have too many people to count every stroke um, <laughs> uh, uh, doing freestyle, right? How are you going to make sure that they're going to be doing the right distance per stroke? Um, making sure their head's in line, making sure their hips are in the right position. You are in control of those things uh, as you train. And the more you work on it as you train, the easier it's going to be to do that at the end of a very long 100-meter race when you're tired in the last 15 um, and, and you get to you know try to keep your technique together. Yeah. You know, for those of you that are here that, that, that don't know, he, he called me Mike. And, and growing up, uh, you know, when I was when I was just a little kid, there were you know I I did suffer a degree of of bullying, you know, and it's kind of funny that you know I, I look back at it and you know because I I had a much different name, you love it. So for me, you know, growing up, uh, you know, pretty quickly, I think after first grade, I, I kind of started using the name Mike. Growing up, and and when I was in college, when Nathan joined us, uh, you know, everyone knew me as Mike. So it's just uh, for those of you that know don't know that's uh, that's what he was saying that's who he was referencing, but uh, yeah you know I one of my heroes growing up Nathan was was Jeff Hugel from from Australia and when he retired he he said you know swimming is it's a black and it's a black and white sport in the sense that when you work hard you 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 get one result when you don't work hard you get another result and what happens is when you leave swimming you got to learn to live in the gray because you're never going to have a hundred percent black or white result. It's always, you know, it's always going to be one, a kind of shade of gray. And, uh, and, and, and to what you know, Nathan was saying, um, it's very much what you put into it. You know, however much you sacrifice, however much you dream and think about it, that's what you're going to get back. So it's, it's pretty important, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Nathan, uh, you know, what is it, what is it that you loved about swimming when you were a kid? You know, like, sure. You know, were you, were you always someone that was going to practice or training with something to prove or, you know, who was it for? I mean, did you enjoy the process? Cause the process is rough. <laughs> 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 the process, it, the process can be rough. That's for sure. Um, so I think, uh, I, I was lucky that, uh, even, even to this day, my, my teammates are some of my best friends. Um, I think that's, that's one of the cool things about, about swimming. Uh, we all share this, this thing in common and swimming, it unites us. And it's not only that, it's the community. I think the community aspect of swimming is, is really great. Um, of course, a lot of the, a lot of the faces that I see right now are, are far too young to understand or appreciate that, but that's just one of those things that you got to trust me on. Um, uh, when you're older, um, you say, Hey, I was, I was a swimmer as a kid. You're going to meet a bunch of people that are really successful, that are really nice. Um, that said, Hey, me too. And then you have something to talk about. Um, and be besides that, um, I did, I think I did. I love, I was really competitive. Of course. I love to race and practice. Uh, I, I think that's what, that's what drove me. Um, and I also loved the, again, it is black and white. Um, it's, it's like, you know, <laughs> gosh, Back in the day, I'm 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 crushing out a lot of yardage. Uh, back in the day with Jay, uh, we were. I remember there was like a set, and it was this was like a recovery set. We did twenty three hundreds on three twenty. <laughs> I think uh, I think a bunch of my uh, some of my teammates uh, considered you know maybe not swimming for the rest of their lives that day, but um, I kept going. And uh, and and the cool thing about doing those sets that that you maybe repeat occasionally 
um, or doing sets where you're trying to hit race pace is that you get to you get to take stock of it, right? So for me, it's like I want to push a 21-0 um, in practice short course yards, all right? What do I feel like after that? How out of breath am I? Can I do it again after 10 seconds? Can I do it again after 20 seconds? Um, those are the things that I take stock of. And, you know, the next week when I get to do it again, hopefully it's better. Hopefully it's easier. And, and that's kind of addicting in its own way, right? It's like, oh, whoa, like this, this is working. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting better. Um, I think, again, when it comes to things like stroke count, um, my stroke count is probably going to be way, <laughs> way too high when we start getting back in the water. But I'm going to be able to look at that. I'm going to be able to take stock of it. And then I'm going to be able to improve on it. And, uh, and my kick counts, how many kicks is it going to take me to get across uh, 25 yards? Um, again, it's probably going to be like 19 uh, when, when I get back in the pool. But as I get better, uh, as I start feeling the water on my feet, as I start working my up kick a little better and, and engaging, you know, my, my thoracic spine a little better, um, you know, I can get that back down to, you know, 16 with, with a decent flow. Of course, we can, you know, we can all cheat it and go like, like 10 if you do massive <laughs> like whale kicks. But, you know, a realistic 16 to get across, that's good for me. Um, th those are the things that I grasp onto. And, and you know, even, even backing up, uh, as, I, as I dealt with, with the testicular cancer thing, one of the most important things that, um, that I think helped me get through it was resetting my expectations as I got back in the water. Um, we did, I mean, I, I hopped in, I, I, all I needed to do, I needed to start getting volume in, right? And the college team and the, the pro team, they were hitting race pace stuff. I was not ready for that at all. This was like February, March. So I got in with the distance guys and they were doing like 125s or 150s. I think it was 125s and they were going on like 115. So I was struggling to try to do those 125s with them, except I was just doing 100s. Um, and we were going on 115. So that's not good for me. Like I should be able to do that. No problem. But it was really, really, really hard for me then. All right. I was struggling. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even know if I made the last one. Um, but that was my new baseline. Um, and the next week I could do it. Right. And that was what I needed. That's what kept me coming back. Um, so it's, it's not, it wasn't about, it's, I guess swimming has never been about comparing myself to others, although I am competitive, of course, it helps to race people, but taking stock of where you're at and then trying to improve on that is, is, is what keeps me coming back. Yeah, I can, I can relate to when I had back surgery in 2010, coming back and, and, and you know, it took me six months just to, you know, laying just so that I could, I could, I could get back in the water. And I remember going to the gym and seeing what my my teammates were lifting and I couldn't do 70% of that. And, and like you said, you just kind of take stock of what you can do and you got to build from it. Um, you know, you know, you jump so far forward um, uh, to, to, to your professional years. I kind of, kind of want to really back into, to, you know, the, the club days and, you know, and one of my, one of my questions was, you know, what was, what was kind of the toughest part of your youth that you know that you kind of dealt with what was that and and how did you overcome it because i you've done a lot of great things nathan um and and there's no doubt that that testicular cancer was one of the hardest things that you know you ever had to kind of get over and deal with um you know could could you point to, to anything in your childhood that you know any adversity and and how you can you know overcame it yeah. Um, so I mean, were you, were you the big kid always? I know, I know your brother is, is huge. <laughs> you know, he was huge even back then. And, uh, and I remember him when he, when he decided to go to UW, but I, 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 I just wonder if you were always the tall kid, if you were maybe the scrawny one back um, in the day. Um, I, I was one of the kid. I was one of the taller kids, but the, I was lucky that I just kept growing. Uh, when, when the tall kids stopped growing around like, you know, eighth, ninth grade, I, I just kept, kept going. Um, and then I think I even grew maybe an inch while I got to college. Um, but as you talk about age group swimming, like, yeah, I, there were periods of times, um, that weren't as fun as others. Um, no doubt. Let me, let's not, let's not sugarcoat it. Um, I think even yeah, those 2300, this, it's no yeah, joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so let's not sugarcoat it. There's times when we call it actually at Cal, um, some of the guys just call it the quits. Um, you know, you have, a, you have a case of the quits, but um, I, th I think as you, um, as you experience a case of the quits, you got to really look back at what you committed to, uh, what you committed to doing. And, and that was, you know, fulfilling a season. And, and my best advice to, you know, people ask me all the time, what, what do you do uh, wh when that happens? And, and my best advice is saying, hey, you did commit to this season. You need to see it through because that's important for, for you as an individual um, to, to stick to your word. And then you need to reassess. And if not swimming is something you want to do after your championship meet and you take you know, whatever amount of time your coach gives you off, then you have to have a good solid conversation with your coach about, you know, what, what you want to do moving forward. I think communication is absolutely key there. The worst thing you could do is just stop showing up. You know, that's, that's not, that's not the right way to do this. That's, you know, try to definitely have to have to be an adult about this, whatever age you are. Anyways, there were certain sacrifices. You know, Friday nights were football games in, in Bremerton, right? And we weren't good at football, but it was definitely a social, you know, a social thing. I went to the ones that I could go to uh, if I could get back in time uh, to attend them from practice. But there was there's plenty of them that I missed. Um, and, and things were going on at, at those that I felt like I was missing out on. Um, I remember Did you once. feel like your peers understood you? you know, and understood your process of, you know, I knew that was hard for me, but you yeah, know, what was that experience like for you? That's, a, that's, a, that's exactly it. They, they, they sort of, sort of, but not really. I mean, it's, it's a big swimming and trying to swim and fulfill your potential is a big commitment. Um, so like, yes and no, my swimming peers, absolutely. All of them did because sure. again, I was at a good, I was at a good quality club team. Um, I was at a, at a club team with aspirations, you know, and it wasn't just me, but my teammates had aspirations of going to division one schools of qualifying for Olympic trials of qualifying for the Olympics. Um, and we all understood what, you know, we, we understood our version of what it took. Um, and, and it was a lot and it was those sacrifices. So that was really helpful and healthy to be surrounded by that. Um, but again, like, as we look at the, uh, when I'm with just my school, my school friends, that was a little, that was a little bit of a different story. I sort of had to set those expectations and, you know, there was a lot of whys and it was, it was, uh, I, I didn't honestly have a, a, a great explanation for them besides saying that that's the way it is. Um, and it's not, the, not the easiest thing to do, but, um, <laughs> I, w and I wish I had a better way to, to say this, but, um, just, trust me that it's worth it. <laughs> um, yeah. especially, and, and I would definitely encourage any of the, any of the younger athletes here to aspire to swim in college. Um, I think that is where, I mean, you just, just looking at, um, people who swim in college and, and who they are friends with to this day, a lot of times it is their, their college teammates. And, um, you know, for me in, in my wedding, um, Every single person in, in my wedding party, besides my uh, my wife's brothers um, and my own brother, were was somebody that I was associated with through swimming. So they were my absolute best friends. I wouldn't trade them for the world. Um, and and that is that is one of the gifts that swimming has given me. I agree. Um, I mean, look, uh, you know, you you agreed to to come hang out with us. You know. Uh, there's a lot of people out there which which would receive compensation for this, and and you know we do appreciate you just coming to hang out, and I kind of attribute that just to the 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 year or two that we spent together. You know, uh, there we we do have a small history, and uh, you know, and and even to this day, I still talk to people from college uh, quite a bit. Uh, you know, from that Cal team, the people that we trained with, the race club, and and even my old friends from when I was ten, nine, ten years old. So, you know, they're they're your lifelong friends. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Tell me, uh, I don't know, just, uh, you know, you, know you, you said that you guys did 2300s. When you were an age grouper, what was the toughest set that you've ever had to face? <laughs> I, dude, I, uh, I, I have been meaning, I always have to ask, uh, ask my friend Jesse. He's, the, uh, he's a sprint coach in Arizona. I have to ask him because he has like a photographic memory of what this set was. Um, 
but it was an 18,000 yard set. It actually might have been short course meters. We might have been at University of Puget Sound, which was 25 short course meters pool. Um, but the gist they got of it a really was, nice short course yards pool now. <laughs> yeah, I know it's really nice now. Back in the day, it was like it was. Oh, it was not not as nice as it is now. Um, but the gist of the set was three one thousands descend one to three, um, and then ten fifties. I think they were fly back, and then three five hundreds descend one to three, and then ten fifties breast free. And so that was. And we did that three times. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't recommend it. <laughs> there are better yeah. ways to get into shape than that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people here have uh, have have some have some experience with Jay. Brilliant, brilliant mind. You know, <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> that's just right. Oh yeah. Fun. So I was just talking to uh, I was just talking to a, a club team who didn't who who didn't. I forgot that you guys actually swam with Jay for a while. Um, he has since changed. Uh, I have heard, uh, did do, does a lot more race pace, um, which I wish I could have experienced, but you know, we were, we were cranking out a lot of, uh, VO2 max stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, there's no doubt that it works. Uh, it, it's just, uh, it's just kind of, it's, it's a hard pill to swallow. Um, you know, it, it must've been, it must've been night and day change for you to go to Cal. You know uh, where where you know you joined. Uh, you I don't know if you if you went there for Mike Bottom or or was it Nort? You know uh, <laughs> you know I, I I do Nort. I do know that Nort is is great friends with Dick Hanula and and then there is that connection since Dick was uh, Jay's coach. But it's uh, it's kind of cool that you know you did go to Cal and 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 got to train with the the sprinters after after all that uh, volume. Yeah yeah no I, I I that's what I was looking forward to. Um, I think as we, you know, again, I, I appreciate that work that I put in and I'm 31 years old. I still benefit from that work. Um, sorry. I, I, I know I'm touching my face, but I swear I just, hand, I just sanitize my hands. Um, <laughs> but uh, I appreciate that work because as we hit the beginning of the season, I get into shape a lot quicker than a lot of my peers. And I do attribute that to the work that I put in as a kid. <clears throat> Um, if any of you guys are bored, epigenetics, look it up. You can affect the way that your genes are expressed by doing the right things that you, uh, that you do today. Um, so yeah, it was awesome going to Cal because man, I mean, again, of course you were, you were one of the guys that I, I looked up to. Um, I actually remember, I'm sure you don't, uh, but it was my senior year, uh, pack tens were at federal way. I was actually timing for them. Um, so I don't think I timed you, but I did time Simon Burnett, I think, in, uh, in the two and free, uh, they weren't great at, uh, at pack, tw at pack tens. Uh, but I think a couple weeks later he went on to, to go one thirty one two, and that record stood for many, many years. So that was, that was like, you know, one of those, one of those things in my head. Um, again, of course I was, I, I was timing while you, while you swam, whatever you swam that day. Um, and, and it was cool cause you know, you were one of the guys that, uh, that I was looking up to that I was, I was chasing your times. I think you, bro you broke the national high school record, what, 19.5 or something. Um, 196. 196. Yeah. 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 I yeah. didn't do that myself, but, uh, I was chasing it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't break 19 in college and, uh, <laughs> that was one of those things. So, you know, I, <laughs> yeah. Who's uh, whoever's good, uh, you know, early on doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be great later on. Um, so, so you never know. You Absolutely. Never know. Uh, well, I mean, I, I love, I love looking back at Connor Dwyer uh, as a great example of that. He was one of, yeah, I think he was like 139 or something uh, out of high school. 139 is not bad, of course not. But it was, he just kept growing. And it hit, all of his siblings were like this. It was just his family was, 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 was like this. So yeah. after his freshman year, I th he drops a bunch of time, goes like 135 or something. He transfers to Florida. The next year, he drops like a 132. Um, so, you know, everybody develops at their, at their own speed. I remember I was 14 years old, and I was racing a guy with, facial hair and like a full beard. It was like out to here. And yeah. I still can't grow a beard, but you know, I knew that guy was probably a little further along in his development than I was at the time. Very, very true. Uh, people do develop differently. And I, I was watching this, uh, you know, I was watching this webinar yesterday where I found out that 
people, uh, some people hit maturity. Those that live closer to the equator uh, actually hit maturity a little sooner. Uh, scientists still don't know why, but you know, it was just kind of interesting to learn about that. That's crazy. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, you know, uh, I, I got another question or two, but you know, in the meantime, uh, anyone out there, if you, if you do have any questions, please write them to the zoom group chat and I'll call on you to, uh, to, to ask Nathan yourself. Um, yeah, you know, Nathan, one of my, one of my, you know, since today for our social media, it's uh, swim cap day or favorite swim cap day. Um, I wonder what was your proudest uh, moment and cap that you ever received throughout your whole career? Um, yeah, one of those things uh, for me was the first time I got that American flag cap with my name on it. Um, it's I something. Think that, that it's, it was such an aspirational thing. Um, it, it's probably totally overused and a lot of people feel that way, but I mean, I think that's the testament to the power of it. Um, and it was that it was when I was, I think I qualified for the junior team when I was 15, but the actual meet was when I was 16. Um, so, and it was, again, it was, it was being part of the junior team. And, and that was something that was really, really special to me because I really felt like I earned it. Um, I, you can buy an American flag cap. You can ask a, a printer to, <laughs> you know, to print your name on it. It doesn't mean quite the same thing. It's still a very important thing. It's still the American flag. Um, but again, because it's, it's kind of like, because USA swimming paid for it because, you know, Speedo printed it on there as, as a, um, as a sponsor of USA swimming really, you know, it, it, it was something that I saw, you know, my heroes wearing, um, my, growing up. And I thought that was just so, so, so cool. Yeah. I think, uh, there's nothing like putting your country's, you know, cap on your head, especially when you deserve it like that. And, and, you know, for a team like, the United States, it truly does mean that you earned it after going through that trials process and all that. For me, you know, I, I remember getting my, my name on my Cal cap, you know, my freshman year, and that was a big deal. But, you know, I think, I think what's, uh, what's really, really cool is um, the name on the cap and the cap that you wear means something. And, uh, and, and you were swimming in, in the name of everybody in this country. You know, for me, I was swimming in the name of everybody in Serbia, um, you know, but even in college or, or even in the club scene, when you wear that cap, it means something. And, and I think when, when you're up in a relay and, and Nathan, you've been on a, you know, at least a thousand relays, you know, it, it means something. You got that cap on with whatever's on it, whether it's your flag or your club team, it's, it's representing everybody that's in the stands and everybody that's watching. And, and it's just, it's a really, really cool moment. And yeah, I, I just wondered if, uh, if it was the U S cap or not. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hey, uh, let's, let's kind of transition into this to, uh, some Q and a, cause a lot of people are here for you, Nathan, definitely not for me, but you know, <laughs> um, yeah, from, uh, from Sierra, um, Sierra, would you unmute yourself and, and ask your question? Um, yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, what are the, what was the recruiting process like for you going to college? Ooh, yeah. Great question. Um, so I was back in the day where it was like, it was old school. Uh, it was before social media, social media has changed everything and changed everything very, very rapidly. Um, so back in my day, July 1st, uh, after your junior year, that was the day you could receive a phone call. And, um, and if coaches really wanted you, they would call you July 1st. So everyone was just looking forward to, to that day. And if they really, really wanted you, maybe they'd pay your club team a visit uh, on, on that day. And, and that, was, that was a big deal. That meant they really, you know, a, club, a, a big time coach could only be in one place at a time, right? So, uh, so July 1, wherever that coach was, that, that meant something really important. Um, also, you could, you, could take all, all your, you could take up to five trips. I think that's the same. Um, you could only talk to the coaches once a week and that would be on the phone i don't remember the email rules uh but there was probably probably something along those lines i know now is crazy different uh i i experience it because i i see the, <laughs> how many recruiting meetings dave has with uh with the athletes and i know that for a while like being able to commit as a junior was a thing and then like now it's not as much of a thing i i, I don't really know uh, but that's what it was like back then it's, what's crazy um is you know me me and coach milo uh we were 
when we were recruited, there was like, it was Auburn, uh, Texas, Cal, uh, and, and Arizona, basically. I mean, those were, those were the top four teams. I think Michigan could, uh, could throw its, its name in there uh, as well. They were very consistent. Oh, Stanford as well. Uh, they were very consistently at, at the top. Um, things have changed very rapidly since then. I really think that the distribution of information um, has contributed that a lot. Um, the ability to coach isn't just word of mouth anymore. There are, there are so many resources online, um, you know, ability to connect with coaches or, or watch what, what they have done. So I think, um, you know, you can get a lot – the best training in the world at a lot of different places now, not just those, you know, traditional top five schools that, that I just named or, or whatever. The what were your was. top three? Um, dude, I almost, I almost signed with the university of Arizona. Like I was, I was ready to go. And then, uh, and then my recruit trip to Cal was the next weekend. I was like, well, pff, I mean, it, it was rainy in November. California was supposed to be sunny. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll go check it out. Uh, Washingtonians do like their son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then, I mean, it, it just, it spoke to me. Um, Cal is a place that is so similar to, uh, to the Seattle area. And I really, I like that. I mean, I appreciate where I grew up. Actually, you know what, just as a side note, shout out to us. Shout out to Washington. Shout out to California for being so smart about the uh, COVID-19 situation about taking it so seriously. The Bay Area was uh, the first to shelter in place. Um, and as in U Washington was, was the first, was some of the first cases uh, in, in the US. So yes, of course this stinks. This isn't fun being home, but what we have done and what we will continue to do is paying off big time uh, for the health of ourselves, for the health of our communities. Um, so again, what we are doing is really important. Um, and, and I couldn't be more proud of, you know, my home state and, you know, where I live now. Agreed. Well said, well said. Um, it looks like your nephew is here off of uh, Ariane's iPhone, uh, Max. Where? Uh, Max, if, if you're there, would you unmute yourself and, and ask your uncle Nathan whatever it is that's on your mind? Yeah, it's unmuted. You can say hi. <laughs> you want to say hi say hi hi hey buddy i did not know you were on here <laughs> <laughs> you want to ask about it my old pair told you um told mom me, told us yeah mom told us you were gonna get a dog what do you want to name her <laughs> oh so you're asking the real questions uh yeah we are getting an english golden retriever puppy uh i think the countdown is like four weeks from now uh gonna take a little trip down to southern california and, and back um to, to pick her up i think her name is going to be zoe like Beautiful. it, Zoe. Yeah. 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 Fingers crossed. the uh, The plan is that she becomes best friends with my cat Ash. But you know, <laughs> we'll we'll see how well Ash uh, you know gets along with her when we get her. You know, it's kind of worrisome. Like some uh, some pets do not get along, and and here you are. You're going to bring another pet into your house. <laughs> uh, without your cat's knowledge, you know. Oh yeah, no, we're we're giving her lots and lots of love uh, right now because you know she's not going to be an only kitty very soon. Yeah. All right, we got a uh, a question from someone named Soap. Uh, Soap, would you please uh, unmute yourself and ask ask your question? Okay. Hi, Nathan. So, how are you keeping in shape during quarantine, and how might you recommend us? Yeah, yeah. Uh, great question. Um, so I'm, I'm doing what I can. Um, we have a, our strength coach is giving us, uh, giving us some workouts. Uh, I understand there's logistical and, and probably legal reasons why uh, USA Swimming can't necessarily prescribe those right now. Um, but that being said, I mean, it's a lot of body weight stuff. I can still gain strength uh, doing body weight. Of course, I would love to just throw on a bunch of weight onto, uh, onto a barbell and just rip out a bunch of squats because it's been a really long time. I can't do that right now. But I can do I can do single leg squat progressions because I'm not strong enough to do a single leg pistol squat quite yet. Um, so that that's one of the things that I've been doing a lot of. Um, I think as swimmers, <clears throat> uh, one of the things 
that we all know and love is uh, our hypermobility, especially in our shoulders. Um, but with, again, that, uh, that great power comes great responsibility. Um, in order to keep that strength up in your shoulders, I think, you know, one of the things that our strength coach uh, prescribed to us, which was being honest, not the most fun thing in the world, uh, <laughs> was setting a 10 minute timer. And in that 10 minutes, we had to either duck walk or we had to do bear crawls. Um, you can look it up on, uh, on YouTube when you get a chance, duck walk, working on a little bit of hip mobility, a little bit of strength, those end ranges of motion. Um, bear crawl, I think that is, that's really important. I think uh, there's a lot of different variations of crawling or uh, you know, being on all fours that swimmers can and should be doing through this time just to keep our rotator cuffs uh, in good shape, keep our, uh, keep our serratus, you know, the muscle that kind of pushes out in that way, keep those uh, firing and, and, and going well. Because as I get back into the water, the, the last thing I would like um, is to have a really weak rotator cuff because that's when, you know, you can start to hurt yourself, uh, get, get problems in, in that arena. So definitely try to keep your, uh, your shoulders in nice and good shape. Actually, one of the things that I even do is just, I hold a water bottle, I hold it above my head where like my catch would be. And I, I just do this. I just kind of, you know, shake it back and forth. And the more I can make that movement come from my scapula and my shoulder blade, the more I know that I'm engaged uh, in, in that position. Um, so I'm, I'm doing, you know, sets of 30 of those. I look like a weirdo and my wife's asking me what I'm doing, but um, you know, just try to get a bunch of those in throughout the day. Last but not least, uh, our, our coach is having us do handstands. Um, and just, I'm not Allie Raisman, uh, so I'm not doing them unassisted. <laughs> I, uh, I usually, you know, just do a handstand against the wall. Uh, I hold it, uh, do something like 30 seconds on, um, you know, a minute or two off, a, a bunch of rounds of that. Um, and then last but not least, uh, to do some aerobic stuff. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of, you know, the, the interval type training. So get on a train. I have a little trainer bike. Um, getting on that, doing, you know, 30 seconds high end, try to spike my lactate, try to get my heart rate up. Um, and then go two minutes where, you know, it's, it's up tempo, but I'm not absolutely killing myself. And then my, my cool down for like, you know, three, four minutes of just really, really slow, keeping, keeping, uh, keeping the blood moving, do it all over again, do it three, four, five times work, obviously build up, start slow. Um, you can do the same thing running if you're used to running. Um, I, I do caution against running too much off the bat if you haven't done it. I know for me, it hurts my, uh, it, I have super flat feet, so it hurts my knees and my hips if I do it too much. So I, I sort of stay away. That's why I'm on, uh, that's why I'm on a bike. Question is, have you ever used your cat in any of your dry land, the shoulder work? Simple <laughs> <in your> cat. <laughs> no, 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 I don't think she would like that very much. She probably would not. She probably would not. Um, I'm looking through the questions. Um, yeah, here, here's an amazing one by, by Alexis uh, about when you were younger, Alexis, would you unmute yourself and, and, and ask? Um, okay. So if you could tell your younger self something you wish you knew at the time, what would you, what would you tell yourself? Hmm. Man. I used to have a really good answer to this, but I forgot it. <laughs> um, I think uh, I think trust the process. You're doing you're doing the right things. Uh, again, like as as we had talked about before, like there were sacrifices that were involved with swimming, and they were they were big sacrifices. They were at the time, you know, things that I thought were really you know important and things that I I felt like I I was missing out on, um, but swimming has opened doors for me that I would have never guessed uh, were would have been opened um, and it was worth it you know over and over and over again um, and and that being said you don't have to make the Olympics uh, for that to be true to you um, again it, it's it's about making making those friends um, it's about going to you know your first travel meet having that experience um, swimming in college again I, I can't encourage it enough I think it's just one of the most incredible experiences um, and and where you get to you know meet 
this this group of friends that you're automatically friends with uh, because you're doing the same thing and then going through the process together and then coming together at a conference meet, an NCAA meet um, to compete for titles as a team um, is, is a lot of, a lot of fun uh, and, and something, an experience that is worth every sacrifice that, that I had, you know, to, to give up uh, through my younger years. Well said, well said. Uh, Harrison, you got a, you got a question. Would you unmute yourself, please? Uh, I was just curious. Um, after you went to your Olympic trials and like you made your time, obviously, and you knew you were going to go to the Olympics, like how did you feel first thing and what was your mentality after as you were going into the Olympics? Yeah, that uh, is a good question. <laughs> um, I do remember it. Uh, it. It was it was crazy. Um, so my Olympic journey, especially in two thousand eight, was it was turbulent to say the least. Uh, because I I came in. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'll keep this short because I I can tell this story uh, as short as a couple minutes and as long as like a half hour. So um, I came in thinking I was hot stuff, thinking I could make the team. Um, and then in prelims, I was next to Michael, um, and Michael absolutely blew me out of the water. Uh, I was, I was literally eating his bubbles. Uh, he went like a 47 high or something. And I, I was going, I think I went 49 low. Um, and it, it, it burst my bubble. I was scared. I wasn't, you know, at that point after the, when the results scrolled, uh, after prelims, I was, I was any ninth through 16th I wasn't in the top eight that was scary because you obviously have to make top eight to uh to make that Olympic trials final semifinals comes along and I'm next to one of my other heroes Neil Walker absolutely amazing sprinter um amazing swimmer I think he was one of the first I think he might have been the first backstroker to go 45 and a short course yards on her back or something um and I was like man if I could just meet Neil I'll for sure be a top eight and I ended up beating him. So I was like totally relieved. And then we look up on the board and I look up and I'm like, uh, top eight scrolls by. I didn't see my name. Nine through 16 rolls by and I'm ninth. Um, turns out that I actually tied for ninth. Ryan Lochte scratched out and he had made top eight. So I had a swim off to make Olympic trials finals, win that swim off in front of basic, like, you know, five fans, you know, obviously, you know, mom and dad, and then the Cal team because Dave made them stay to watch. <laughs> um, and then all the, all the officials. Uh, so it wasn't the most exciting. Uh, it wasn't the most exciting race in terms of the atmosphere, but the, uh, extremely impactful in terms of, you know, it, my outcome. Um, and then here comes Olympic trials finals. Like I, I had this crazy roller coaster of thinking I was hot stuff. I was going to make the Olympic team to getting crushed by Michael, to trying to beat Neil, beating him, but then still not making it. I was exhausted. But, and I still actually take this as a lesson to myself to this day. Um, if, if you go back, you could, you could verify what the times exactly were. But I think I was like 48-9, 48-8, and then 49-0 to win the swim off. So three 100 frees in one day. Um, and then to make the Olympic team, I actually went 48-4. And, uh, and no lying, uh, I swear, each one of those races, I felt like I put 100% of effort into it. Um, so to this day, I still, you know, regardless of what happened going into the meet, regardless of what happened at the meet before it, regardless of how I felt that morning even, I still feel like I can have an amazing performance because I, I genuinely thought I gave 100% each of those races. The last one comes along. And I drop half a second, which is huge in a hundred freestyle. Um, so, you know, I, I think back on that often when I'm at a meet and I'm not, not feeling so great. So, and to actually answer your question, it's amazing, man. It's, it's the best feeling ever. You set a goal, you work for that goal for like years. I mean, obviously the, the one year I took off and trained with coach Milo um, and uh, it, it, in Florida, but even before that, that was, it was a goal of mine that I'd been working towards for so, so, so long. And then you actually achieve it. Um, and that it's, it's the most gratifying, I mean, feeling ever. 
Um, and I guess the mentality was to figure out how to go faster, um, work with my coach, see what my, you know, Mike Bottom had only worked with me. That was my second year working with Mike. So we were still figuring each other out. He was figuring out my body physiologically. Um, let's see what happens when we just continue to rest. Unfortunately, I, it didn't really work. I didn't go any faster at the Olympics, but how are you supposed to know those sort of things until you try it? Um, so I, I have no, no problems with that. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, it was kind of the, I tried to split the switch into figuring out how I was going to be going from being a prelims only relay swimmer to being a finals relay swimmer, but I didn't figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think, uh, what people don't understand is once you get into the final, you, uh, you got, you got a puncher's chance. You know, especially at the, the U.S. Olympic trials and, and, and the 100 freestyle and 200 freestyle. I mean, you got a chance to make the relay if you, if you just make that final. Whether you're eighth, uh, there are people that they are going to get psyched out just from the, the gravity of that moment. You know, it, it, it crushes them. You know, it, it, could you recall in that finals race, Nathan, um, whether you, you felt this burst of energy, this, uh, this adrenaline kind of kick in the last 20 meters, that kind of... You know, because to drop a half a second out of nowhere after having swum the hunter free three times in one day, it's hard. You know, uh, it, I'm sure it wasn't an epiphany that you had. It must have been, you know, this internal belief in yourself. You know, do you? Yeah, I, I, I wish I could tell you exactly what it was. Um, and or did everything just go in auto drive and you just kind of let your machine was, just do what it does? It was a little bit more of the autopilot and what... Mike and I had talked about is, Hey, you need to be out a little faster. And of course me going out a little faster means, uh Oh, like <laughs> I'm probably going to hurt a little bit worse uh, in the last 15. That's a little scary. It's a little intimidating. No one wants to, you know, no one wants to die those last 15 meters, of course. But that being said, I went the same time. I came back, I think in the same time that I had been coming back. So I, I was, you know, you sort of have to have a little bit of flexibility. Like, not be afraid to to try something new um don't go crazy you know i'm not going to go the first 50 no breath that's not going to work for anybody that's not gonna be pretty but making those small adjustments you know of course in communication with your coach can pay off sometimes great um yeah you know uh gabby gabby would you uh would you unmute yourself and ask ask your question yeah, so my dad swam for Cal for a little bit under Coach Nort, and I would also like really love to swim for Cal. Um, what would you recommend to do to get into Cal and like let them like recognize you as a swimmer? First of all, go Bears! <laughs> that's um, right. Yeah, uh, that's that's a good question. I mean, that Cal's not an easy school to get into, of course, uh, no doubt. So you have to pay attention to your academics. Um, I think, uh, I don't, again, I don't know what the rules are uh, specifically when it, when it comes to recruiting, but there is an interpersonal aspect of co college swimming, no doubt. And I think as you, if you, if you think of how you want to present yourself as a person, as an athlete um, to Terry, to, to the coach, um, that's, that's going to be an important part of this process. Um, Make sure that as you respond to emails, you, you do it, you know, uh, in a timely manner. Uh, make sure you use proper punctuation, spell check, of course. Come Treat this as you want to treat your profession, because truly it is. Um, and, and the more, you know, professional you can, you can be through the process, the better off your chances are, are going to be of, of getting into, you know, Cal, of course, or, you know, any, any other schools that, uh, that, that you may consider. Um, I would, I would even speak to that, you know, um, do what you got to do every single day in the pool. Cause at the end, it'll be the results that are, that are going to be, you know, that Terry McKeever is going to be looking at uh, just as any coach. If, if the results aren't there and, and, you know, you're probably not going to be within their radar. Um, but, but, you know, there, there are people out there that, that don't have a whole lot of swimming background and, um, 
and you know they've got something about them you know and and Nathan I remember you coming in you know you were you were this tall really really skinny kid and and I'll admit I don't think anybody thought that you were going to make that Olympic team and you were good you were really really good it's just you know uh I, I don't know what it was that you were able to tap into and and go as fast as you did but you know uh, I'm sure that set you up for the rest of your career that confidence level um Jody, Jody, would you, uh, would you, I, I love this question. Uh, Jody, would you answer or, or ask Nathan your question? Hi, Nathan. Hello. Thanks for your time today. Um, I was wondering if you would ever like to coach someday. Oh, that is a good question. Um, <laughs> um, I don't necessarily rule it out. Um, def I definitely, that's, that's probably the best thing, the best way I can put it. Um, right now, actually, I, uh, I, I co-own a swim school with, uh, with one of my teammates, Will Copeland, that I swam with. Um, He's a great guy. Say again? He's a great guy. He is. Will. He, he definitely is. He's awesome. Uh, he's great to work with. Um, so, you know, quite honestly, right now, we're working on trying to make sure that we can, we can cover our mortgage. Um, and then after, uh, after this whole situation is over, getting the swim school going. Um, and I, I do love coaching. Um, I love teaching people the things that I have learned through my career, watching them start to gravitate towards it, grab hold of it, and then take ownership over it. Um, that is really satisfying for me and very cool. Um, the one thing that I am timid, uh, about is quite honestly the sacrifices that that a high level coach has to make and you know of course shout out to your guys' own coach um it's it's a huge time commitment and it's a lot of time on the weekends it's a lot of time spent on the road away from your family um so again thank your coach uh make sure make sure you tell uh coach Milo that that you really appreciate what he does for you um the all the hard work he puts into it um because you know, the energy that he puts into, uh, into swimming can make him tired for his own family sometimes. I, I appreciate that. Um, you know, I, I, I told my club coach, Dave Salo, and I told Mike Bottom, there was no way I was going to ever become a coach, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, and look at me here today. You know, I, I went to Cal thinking I, I was going to go into diplomacy. Um, you know, that's what I, that's what I studied and, and I thought that I was going to do it. And, uh, you know, and, and really, you know, uh, Mike Bottom, he told me, he's like, he's like, careful not to get into coaching because it's going to suck you in. It's, it's a beautiful job. It's a beautiful job. And, and you're right. Um, it requires quite a bit of sacrifice, yep, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I'm, uh, and just on this matter, Jody, I, I want to, you know, I, I remember, I remember, um, asking my coach, Mike Bottom a couple weeks ago when he visited during Pac 12s, um, you know, uh, I, I asked Mike in front of my wife, I was like, well, what would, what would happen if your wife, uh, ever wanted you to stop coaching? And she, and he said, you know, I'm pretty sure my wife would say that she wouldn't like the version of me or who I would be if I didn't get to coach. And I, mm -hmm. and I think that that much of myself, you know, I, I really do enjoy what I do. And, and I think that, I think that, you know, my wife prefers this version of me over what I would <laughs> be if I had to go back into sales. <laughs> or, or any other job for that matter. <laughs> um, I'm pumping through these questions and there, there, there are a lot of uh, questions that you can kind of just discover on your own. If you go to Wikipedia, you know, are you a sprinter or a distance swimmer? You know, uh, given, given Nathan's background, I'm pretty sure he could do the 1500 if he wanted to, but he's a sprinter. Um, I, there was one great question from Matthew. Um, and, and you, and you said that you started swim school when you were two, but Matthew, would you ask your question? All right. Well, he asked, uh, what um, age so did you start? What, um, what age did you, um, start swimming? Oh yeah. Um, so it was, it was five. Um, uh, that's when I started yeah. like competing. I have, I think mom has a home video of it. Competing is a loose term. <laughs> Show us Cecilia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
here is another great question from uh, from a Gabby. Gabby, will you ask your question, please? Uh, yeah. So in these tough times, like most of us obviously don't really have access to a pool or like a coach. So what do you like recommend to do in place of like physically swimming? Like, do you think visual visualization is a um, important part of our training right now? Oh, that's a great question. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I do. I do think that visualization can play a nice role in what you're doing. I, I just caution against getting too intense into it. Um, I, I think like, just thinking about what it is you're you're striving for, right? And, and I, I don't, I don't know you personally, uh, I don't know your times. But how think about the next level you want to get to and, and visualize yourself there, for instance, and then do everything you can in your power to create a base to, to set that up. Um, I know it's hard. I, to I, I totally understand it, but there are still things that you can, you can do. The worst thing you could do is, is just, just be like, well, I'm just gonna take time off completely and, and eat a lot of chips and ice cream until this is all over. No, there's still things you can do. Um, I don't think you need to- Did you to hear that, Leland? <laughs> Um, I don't think you need to go crazy again. Um, just, I'll just, I'll just let you know where we're at right now. For instance, Dave is, Dave is telling us that we're on pause. Um, and, and as we get back into the water, it's not going to be like, oh my gosh, we missed out on all this training. We need to hit it right away and, and get going. No, we have, we have like 14 plus months before Olympic trials it'll be okay. We can take our time and build up back to where we're, we're at every bit of confidence that um, we're able to do that. Honestly, like between like the shoulder surgery I had in 2015 and, and dealing with testicular cancer, um, I understand. Yeah, it really stinks. It's not fun to build it back up, but it will come back. Um, so having, the, having that level of confidence is, is, is really important. All right, let's uh, let's wrap this up with one last question from Mercedes. Um, I, I love that question, and, and I think a lot of people can can pull some utility out of it. Mercedes, would you un unmute your unmute your iPad or whatever? Yeah. So when you were younger, like, did you ever hit a block where you wanted to quit? Because no matter how hard you worked, like every single day, you couldn't get faster. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and to, to those, for me, for those, and, and I guess this is one of the things that I would love to have gone back and talked to my own self about. Um, I, I, again, I don't know what your, um, you know, events are, but the cool thing about being an age grouper is that you essentially swim everything all the time. Um, you can still, you can still focus on a lot of different things in order to try to improve um, rather than just trying to train harder right think about it from training smarter and, and, and wrap your mind around that perspective um, uh, I think again underwaters are just becoming so incredibly important these days uh, maybe it's working on your technique in dolphin kick or maybe it's working on getting your feet over faster um, for, for a freestyle turn um, and, and focusing on, on those component things as opposed to focusing on the overall big picture. Oh my gosh, if I train so hard, if I try so hard, um, I'm, I'll, I'll go best time at the end of the year. That's very useful and, and works for, for many people, but you probably will, as, as you may be experiencing right now or, or other people may be experiencing, it'll, it'll kind of come to a little bit of a plateau and then you got to figure out, hey, how am I supposed to get faster? What I, what I did last year and just try and train harder. Um, you know, sometimes occasionally we'll just, you know, for me personally, I mean, again, I'm 31. I don't recover like I used to. It just throws me into overtraining. But there are like technical aspects of my swimming that I can work on, right? Like the, uh, I, I keep coming back to dolphin kick, but how about, how about we talk about freestyle? How about we talk about um, where my hand is as I catch and how I connect my kick with my catch hand, um, how that all goes through my core and what I can do to strengthen my core in order to feel those, those sorts of things. And those, and if you find a weakness, you can, you can work on it. And then next week you can work on it and, and, and improve. 
Um, maybe it's working on fly when I am feeling bad and we're trying to do pace stuff and I'm not able to hit my freestyle paces. I'm going to work a little bit of butterfly. I don't even know what my, I don't even know what my hunter fly pace is, but there are a lot of different things that I, I can do. You know, I can make sure I, I hit my, my eight dolphin kicks underwater, um, have a nice, good breakout um, where I'm not coming way out of the water. Um, one of the things I struggle with again in fly is that I, I throw my hands too hard and I, I, I try to force, I try to muscle my way through the water, try to feel it. Um, there's so many different ways to improve um, in, in swimming. I think it's, it's really cool because we're not naturally aquatic animals, right? Um, so it, it, it's something that you can find ways to get better at in so many different you know, avenues. I, I don't do a ton of breaststroke, but I, you know, if I wanted to, I could start doing some breaststroke kick, uh, you know, working my sculling, all, all those, those uh, sorts of things. And that's, that's what's fun about swimming. All right. Uh, Nathan, you, you obviously got a lot of fans in the state of Washington and, uh, and every time I watch you race, I hold my breath, you know, uh, and, and, and I, and I think, you know, uh, there was a question of whether you wanted to go to the, you know, to the Olympics next year. You know, I don't need Nathan to answer that question. Yes, he wants to go to the Olympics next year. You know, um, we 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 wish you all the best. Um, you know, do what you can if you're if you're ever in in this neck of the woods, come train with us. Uh, you're you're always welcome, sir. Um, and 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 thank you, thank you yeah. for 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 giving us a little bit of your time and 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 this pleasure. No all problem. Right. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, I really appreciate it. Again, we're all in this situation together we're all going to get out of it together also you know last i'll just leave you with this um one of the things again that as i was dealing with uh testicular cancer was at night time talking to my wife and being like man in a year from now this will all seem like a bad dream and the testicular cancer part of that is pretty much true and i really hope that it's going to be true for uh for the COVID thing we're going to get through this we're going to get through it together and then we're all going to be back at a pool uh, training our butts off and, and trying to get to Olympic trials in the Olympics. So best of luck guys. Uh, stay safe out there. Thank you, Nathan. All right, man. Take care of yourself. Talk to you later. Bye. -bye. Yeah.